The Huawei just launched the new P20 series flagships and I'm mostly interested in the P20 Pro, which alongside the P20 are successors to the P10 series that was launched last year in Barcelona. In fact, this is a completely new phone with all new design, new powerful cameras, improved AI neural processing unit, and much more. I'm not going to talk about the notch design in Android phones and P20's similarities to the iPhone X. I will leave that for you, so make sure to use that comment section. In case you don't like the notch, you can always hide it. Thanks Huawei for giving us options. Well, I will keep the notch as I got used to this design element very quickly. First of all, let's get the specs out of the way. Both P20 and the Pro will ship with the AI-powered Kirin 970 chipset, but the Pro model will have more RAM and storage. Sadly, there is no microSD card slot for storage expansion, but both phones have dual SIM card slots. In the hand, the P20 Pro feels very premium and expensive, and it all starts with a large OLED full-view display that I found to be really sharp and bright. The P20 will have a slightly smaller 5.8-inch LCD panel with the same resolution. The P20 is said to be the world's first to use gradient color, and it looks beautiful, especially the color that I have. If you add a shiny metal trim and quality metal buttons, you're looking at a truly premium device. I was also impressed by the fact that Huawei managed to cram in a huge battery in such a thin profile of the P20. The P20 has a 3400 mAh power bank and the P20 Pro has a 4000 mAh unit. Other things you need to know about the design. There is no headset jack, the P20 Pro is IP67 certified for water and dust resistance, whereas the P20 has a lower IP53 certification. Finally, the P20 has Hi-Fi wireless audio system that assures great sound quality via the Bluetooth. The P20 phones are all about the new powerful cameras. The P20 Pro is more interesting since it has three cameras that have combined 68 megapixels. Well, there is a fourth selfie camera with impressive 24 megapixels. The first is a powerful 40 megapixels RGB camera that is accompanied by 8 megapixel telephoto lens. The third is the monochrome sensor that also has plenty of megapixels to play with. Huawei also added a laser receiver to achieve fast autofocusing speed and a flash with color temperature sensor that is used for wide balance adjustment. Okay, so here is more information about the cameras. The P20 Pro uses 223% larger sensor than the competition. It has 5 times hybrid zoom, 4 in 1 hybrid focus system, 4D predictive focus, it can achieve ISO levels up to 51,200, and it can record 960 FPS slow motion video at 720p. Finally, the AI powered Kirin processor makes the best out of this powerful hardware configuration. In other words, the AI helps apply the best camera settings to take a nice looking picture automatically in any light. Well, all of that sounds really impressive on paper. During my brief time with the device, I took quite a few pictures in low light and first impressions about the image quality are pretty good thanks to no small part to AIS or AI image stabilization. In fact, Huawei claims that their image stabilization is so powerful so you won't need a tripod even in extremely low light situations. Well, we will see if that's true in the full review as this camera shake test is not really scientific. I was also impressed with 5x hybrid zoom as the image remained sharp and clear zoomed in. You can zoom in a lot as the object shown in the video was really far away. The camera app is really fast and responsive and you can switch between different camera modes easily. There's also a pro and other modes that I will test in detail very soon. The EMUI 8.1 is based on Android 8.1, which is said to be a more capable platform for the AI. As usual, there are plenty of features and customization options Huawei phones have been famous for. My first impressions, the phone is really fast and smooth, thanks to a powerful chipset and neural processing unit that helps allocate resources to the specific task. Obviously, it will be interesting to see how the phone performs after installing plenty of apps. 
I also found the fingerprint scanner to be really fast, but I was mostly impressed with the face unlock feature. I used it in low light, but it still unlocked the phone very fast, but keep in mind that you still need to press the power button first in order to use the face unlock feature. At the moment, I don't know the exact pricing or availability of the new Huawei P20 phones, but make sure to check out the video description for the latest information. What I know is that the phones will cost premium, about 800 euros or more, depending on the specific model and region. My first impressions of the P20 Pro are very positive, as the phone looks and feels premium, the display is really nice, I'm okay with the notch design, the cameras produce good looking images even in low light, and the phone is really fast despite many features and customization options in the user interface. If you want to learn more about the Huawei P20 Pro, make sure to subscribe to the Techline HD for a full review that is coming out very soon. Also leave me a comment if you have any questions and follow me on social media for the latest updates. It was Linus, thank you for watching and see you soon.